Today I'm going to walk you through the file I made for the Behringer Wing. Uh, what I did was I created a basic board file, uh, labeled everything, set up the input and output routing, um, reverb, delay, mains, buses, set all that up in uh, the most basic form uh, that made sense just to get you a starting point so that you, you, know, you could load that and you could modify it um, as you will or you know it's a great starting point or learning point for you if you just want to see how things could be done so a couple pointers here so this board file was built uh, for live sound it was built for a full band right vocals instruments drums um, it was built using um, the anticipation of using track channels so a computer playing track channels in um, i set it up so that there's a left right main out there is a separate subwoofer out so that's controlled separately i set it up for live streaming so there's a live streaming main i'll dig into that a little bit and um, i routed um, you know aes 50 routes local routes uh, i routed usb routes for multi-track recording so it's covering multi-track recording and it's also covering if you have a dante card I did some patching in Dante for uh, multi-track recording as well. And my board is set up with Dante and I have uh, my uh, computer tracks coming in through Dante. So I have them all broken out and they're coming in over Dante. So I'll kind of walk through the board file so you can see how it's set up and then you can modify it from there. All right, so I'm gonna go through this file and just explain how it's all set up so you understand go through the channel layers first so we'll start with channels 1 through 12. i've got six vocal mics set up here i do have basic uh, vocal eqs set and that's about all the processing that i have set up basic eqs and basic compressors are set on these then i have two acoustic guitars two electric guitars those are both stereo a keys and a pads channel those are both stereo now we'll jump down to layer, uh, channel layers 13 through 24. Uh, so I've got a bass guitar here, and then I've got a bunch of track channels built in here. So they all start with a T. So I've got uh, the real bass guitar, then I've got a track piano, track bass, and then I've got the drum kit. And then I have more tracks uh, after this. So I've got kick, two snare mics, hi-hat, three tom mics, and two over mics, a left and a right. Okay, so most of this, um, I don't have too much EQ on because that's gonna be pretty independent, uh, but I do have some basic settings set on each one of these for you. Now if we jump down to 25 through 36, these are all tracks, so this just depends on if you're using tracks and how you have them set up. I do have all of this patched uh, to come from, we use multitracks.com playback app for our tracks and that's routed through Dante. So these are all patched currently through the Dante card. Okay, so I have uh, track drums, track percussion, track loops, track keys, track acoustic, two track electrics, a track pads, strings, FX, and an aux channel, okay? Down on 37 through 40 and auxes, um, this is set up in a church environment, uh, so I have my speaking mics here. So these first three channels are all three speaking mics, uh, two headsets and one handheld. Then I've got two computer channels. Um, my first one is labeled Pro 7. We use ProPresenter, so that's ProPresenter 7 is what that stands for. It's a computer channel. That is also over Dante, so currently it is patched uh, through Dante. And then I do have a local computer channel as well, just patched to local three and four. So you could use Dante or local or both. A couple open channels here, and then I have my comm system patched into my soundboard. I route that to a different few different places. Comm system coming over Dante. The click and guide coming from multi-tracks playback, that's over Dante. And then the talkback mic is set up here on aux eight plugged into local five. All right, so that's all the inputs and how I have them laid out there. Um, I do have users one and two set up how I use them uh, when I run my bands. So 
pretty similar, but I'll just run through this real quick. User one, I have all my band vocals first, then instruments, acoustics, electrics, keys, bass. And then if you jump down to user two, I have the drum kit there. So how I run this is obviously all that's on the left side, users one and two. On the right side, users one and two. User one, I have all of my track channels. And then the last channel is my vocal delay. So I'm, I run this, uh, users one and one, and that's what I see all the time is the band minus the drums, all my track channels and my vocal delay. That's what I like to have surfaced myself. And then I can jump down to user two here for the drum set user two here for all my speaking mics and my computer. On the right hand side here, I have DCAs currently set up under user one. I have just four that I use the most. So I have an all DCA, drums, tracks, and effects. So that's vocal effects. My all DCA is all of the band. It is not all channels. So I do use this. Um, I don't use mute groups, but I essentially use this as my mute group for my band. So I can fade the band on and off or muted obviously with the DCA. So that's all band, does not include speaking mics or my computers. Then I do have a drum DCA here. So while I, you know, normally I'm on user one across here, I don't have the drums on this uh, first layer. I do have my drum DCA so I can mess with that here. All my tracks are in this DCA and like I said, vocal effects so I can fade those on and off as needed. So my reverb is not on the front of the surface but I do have it built into this effects DCA. I do have a few more DCAs set up and we'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> all right, so that's all the layers here. Now let's look at my buses. So I do have uh, the first six buses are set up for wireless in-ear monitors. So that's how those are patched. Then I have, uh, so those are for the band. Then I also have a director in-ear that I use. So it's just another wireless in-ear here. I do have a bus for a wedge, you know, a stage floor wedge. And then um, in my setup, I use Behringer P16s. So this is also patched to accommodate Behringer P16s. And because those are limited to 16 channels, I use a couple buses to solve that. So my three buses here labeled B Talkback, B Tracks, B Drums are just combinations of channels for the Behringers. So the B Talkback has the Talkback mics, and also that's where I put our speaking mics and a couple other random things. All the tracks are in B Tracks. Again, that's for the P16 monitors only. And all the drums are in the B Drums. Same thing for the P16s only. So I have all those buses set up and ready to go. In addition to, if we arrow over, buses 14 and 15 are already set up for vocal reverb and vocal delay. So I have those set up and patched through the effects rack as well as all of my vocal mics are in those buses already for you. All right, now let's jump over to mains. The way I have the mains set up is main one is set up for left and right out. Main two is set up for your subwoofers. So I do control those independently and I only send certain channels like the kick drum uh, the floor tom, the bass guitar, um, and then some track stuff to the subs. Everything else does not go to the subs. Everything goes to mains left and right. Main three is not set up as anything, and main four is set up as a live stream bus. So this is set up as a post fader of the main mix. So everything currently in the live stream, I'll show you here if we go to select the live stream, go to sends on fader, and go to channels. Everything is at Unity right now, but it is a post fader bus. So any changes you make at front of house will reflect in the live stream uh, main. The reason I do it this way is because if I like what's happening in the house, however, let's say the bass guitar is a little too loud on the stream only, I can go into the live stream mix and I can bump the bass guitar down just a little bit but it still is reflective of what I do in front of house. It's just reflective at a little bit lower volume, if that makes sense. So that's how that live stream is set up. And then you can see if we go over to the subs bus, everything here is off. You can see I've got the bass, track bass, kick in it, and that's you know pretty much it. All right, so those are the mains. I don't have anything set up for matrixes at the moment. 
One other thing to note on the buses, I had mentioned I have the tracks bus. So the way that I run the tracks is I have access to all the tracks on this board broken apart. We don't always use all the tracks. Um, so this B tracks bus that goes to the band's in-ears is post fader as well so that if I'm not using a track acoustic and I have it off in front of house, it's not going to send it to the band's ears even though it is on in that bus because it's reflective of what I have on and off and the volumes at front of house. So that's how that is set up. All right, let's run through the rest of my DCAs uh, because I only have four surfaced over here on user one layer. Uh, all the DCAs are, I have, a, like I said, an all DCA, which is the entire band. I have all vocals. Again, that's band vocals only. All instruments, all drums, all tracks, vocal effects all together. And then I have one for our pastor speaking mics. So that's grouping those three mics together into that one DCA. I don't always use them, but they are available if I need them and they're patched in. All right. Let's go through some of the routing. So if we start with source routing, everything is labeled. So my local ins, uh, like I mentioned before, currently are just a computer and a talkback. So this channel five here is how I have the talkback patched. So if you plug your talkback into uh, XLR5 on the back of the board, it will just work. Uh, this is set up using a Behringer S32 stage snake. Uh, so if you're using something different, you know, the patching might have to change slightly. But as long as you have any of the Behringer or Midas products, you know, or any um, AES 50 products that support these channels, you're good to go. So I have this all patched. Obviously you can move stuff around, but if you patch one-to-one, -one, uh, everything will just work. So I'm gonna give you a patch sheet uh, on my website that you can download that shows you how this is all plugged in so that if you do want to just use this file, if you have these products, the Behringer Wing, the Behringer um, S32 uh, Snake, and you follow my patch sheet, you plug it all in, it in theory would actually just work for you. So I have it all labeled, I'll provide that patch sheet there. So that's sources. Um, I do have Dante set up if you're going to use it. This is how I have my tracks coming in. So Dante is currently patched uh, for the first 16 channels as tracks, click and guide. And then I mentioned earlier, I have ProPresenter and Com coming in uh, on Dante as well. So those are patched in there. I think that's about it for inputs. I do have an oscillator set up if you wanna use it. All right, let's jump over to outputs. So obviously this is gonna vary for everybody, but my local outs, I do have a local director in here that I plug in and my local live stream XLR outs. So that's all patched through the local outs there. AES50A, so here's how your outputs will work on that stage snake if you're using my file. The first six are patched to in-ear monitors. And then uh, 13 is your wedge, 14 is your subwoofers, and 15, 16 are your mains left and right. Now the way that the wing works with Ultranet, if you have a Behringer P16 personal monitor is, uh, you have to use channels 33 through 48 on AES50A outputs. So the patching that you see here uh, is for the Behringer P16s. So I have that patched, my six vocals, one acoustic, two electrics, keys, pads, bass, my drum bus, my tracks bus, my talkback bus, and the click track. So that is all pre-patched for you for the P16s, and you can just change as needed. All right, I do have USB and Dante patched for multi-track recording, so I have all the channels that are used on this board pre-patched to the USB audio out. Uh, that allows you to connect to a computer and multi-track record in a multi-track software of your choice. So I have all that pre-patched for you, as well as if you're using Dante, the same thing. Um, I have everything um, going out in Dante. All right, the only other thing I think I have set up for outputs is I do have the USB recorder set up uh, to record mains left and right as well. All right, a couple other things to note. 
under the effects racks, I do have a vocal verb and a vocal delay set up on effects racks one and two. Those are in buses, I believe, 13 and 14, as we discussed earlier. And then I do have a graphic EQ set up on main one that is set for my room EQ, so you'd want to obviously adjust that, but you can see uh, how it works and um, make any adjustments there. So that is active and on. So your main one left and right does have a graphic EQ on it. So those are the effects. Uh, a couple of the things on the surface here. So obviously you have <coughs> options here for user uh, defined keys. And then, so we'll go through all this. So page one on my user defined keys are set up uh, to mimic this upper right section. So if you don't know this section here uh, can be controlled, you can put four channels on here to gain you know, those on the main surface. So you don't have faders, but you do have uh, your wheel here is the fader, and then you have mute buttons here. So what I have is on user two here, I have my speaking mics. There's three speaking mics and my computer. So those are kind of buried because I usually live on user one. I have those surfaced right here just for quick reference. So this is my three speaking mics and my computer here. So if we go to user two here, you can see that if I turn this knob here, it's gonna move this fader here. So they're directly tied together. It's muted, now it's not. So that's all right here. So it's a pretty cool feature, but you do that by tying it to one of the pages in the user defined buttons here. So page one mimics those faders so that it puts it here. I do have a separate video walking through exactly how to set that up if you need more information. All right, page two here is uh, shortcuts for sends on fader for my wireless in-ear monitors. So in-ear one, two, three, four, five, and six. All you have to do is click in and out, and it takes you to sends on fader for that mix. So that's page two, and that is it there. Down here, I don't have any user-defined buttons. I usually live in show control in this section here uh, because I do run shows you know, with scenes, snippets, snapshots, all that. So I usually have this on show control here. I don't have any mute groups set up, but those would be there. So show controls, that's just a built-in feature of the board. All right, we talked about this section up here. My DCAs usually live here. Obviously, you can go to your mains over here. This is your main fader, but I don't actually ever adjust it. So I live on user one and more or less use this all fader here. So mains, main subs, live stream is here. All right, talk back. So I do have the talk back. Again, if you plug it into local input five, it will work. It is currently patched to go to those wireless in-ears, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those buses, those are tied to my in-ears. And then bus nine is my talk back bus for the P16s. So that's where the talk back is currently going. Uh, so just wanted to bring that to light. So if you do obviously make changes, there's going to be several different places where you might have to adjust certain things. Um, that's about it for the explanation of the basic Behringer wing uh, file that I'm providing. Hopefully that helps get you a little set up and understand how I set it up in case you need to make changes.